Hello there guys, and welcome to yet another Longhorn video. I know you guys are tired of Longhorns, but I have to show you guys this one, which is uh, after the scratch, so it's going to look pretty different if you compare with uh, the one I showed first, which was build number 4053 as far as I remember. So yeah, there's a lot of differences. You, you guys are about to see that. And uh, I wouldn't say that it's that it looks like Vista already. It doesn't. So it's still pretty, pretty far away from looking like a proper Windows Vista. But it was a huge, massive ass step forward from what we've seen in build 4053. They got rid of most of the things that would never ever make it to the final build. So no more side menu, no more, uh, you know, uh, multi-desktop feature. And uh, it starts to shape up more like Vista itself. RAM usage is pretty damn good, not gonna lie. It's way better than the XP based first builds. So they kind of fixed that. And the icons are not the same anymore from XP. So they got the icons uh, changed, which look a lot more like Vista. And most importantly, they got rid of Longhorn name and it's Vista already, as you can see on the lower right corner, it says Windows Vista Beta 1 Evaluation Copy. So as you can see, it already has a cool name. Uh, <laughs> the cool name, the blast <laughs> Vista name. Insert irony here, because we all know what happened to Vista. It was a disaster. But not because the system was bad, but more like because people could not run it properly back then. Because, you know, it was kind of heavy, kind of demanding, both graphically and uh, um, uh, RAM-wise as well. So, yeah, I made my own account in this one. Because some do let you make your user account settings, some builds. They do let you add a password and name. Some don't. Some will just make an account named admin without password. So yeah, there's that. Uh, the, the start menu looks a lot more like Vista, as you can see. It still has a few things that remind a lot of Windows XP. A lot of uh, remnants from XP still. The white uh, background there and shit. But as you can see, all the icons were already changed to the Vista-ish looking icons. And... Uh, uh, other than that, uh, they changed how the the windows look, like uh, the Explorer in general work, uh, looks and works. As you can see, it looks a lot more like Vista, although a little squarey still wasn't quite Vista yet. And it's very sluggish, as you can see, still misbehaving a little bit, but kind of usable. So there is no transparency yet. But as you can see, the icons are all from Vista already. And it all looks like Vista. Now, it's pretty, pretty damn like Vista. So it was a step closer to that. They already came to a point where, you know, they decided how it was going to look. How the Explorer was going to look. They, they were sure already about how it would shape up. As you can see, it's pretty similar. Although, uh, a lot more features were added and shit and, you know. Those icons were changed as well for something more modern and it got transparency which fucked up <laughs> the life of lots of us with weak computers back then. And here as you can see I set 4 gigs of RAM for this VM because it was already very very damn heavy for the time. I think this builds from 2005, yeah version 2005 as you can see up there. And now it shows up as Windows code name Longhorn and not as XP on the system properties, which is kind of cool. And it was already based off Windows Server 2003. So there's a lot of differences when it comes to that. Like file structure wise, system stability wise, it's still 
dies a lot on me though. Uh, three times doing random stuff, it just blew screen. So it means it was very unstable still. But yeah, so from that you can compare with the video of build 4053 and it, you can see <laughs> it's still glitches the same way with the windows. I, I would blame the graphics drivers, probably the issue there. Maybe if I got like a VMware tools to work here, it would change that or not. I know. So as you can see, it's pretty much uh, they got the looks like very, very close to what's the final result. So it was already very final build. Not one of the last builds though. It was an early build of the uh, scratch after scratch. I mean, but like it already reminds a lot more of Windows Vista than you know the build 4053 which reminds me a lot of XP it's still you know they got back with the start menu instead of just the icon so I think they were unsure if they should get rid of star or not if that would lead you know confuse people so you know maybe they were like should we really get it rid of star would people complain? Would people like it? So they were probably a little unsure about what that. Some of the icons are still from XP, like this one. Uh, safely remove hardware. As you can see, the way it shapes up, uh, the folders lay, uh, folders layout and shit, it's pretty much like Windows 7 and Vista, of course. So that was something that uh, the guys probably liked. So it was capped and carried on to Windows 7 because really it's pretty damn cool it's pretty handy dandy no more like Windows XP where you had to click and then it would open a drop down another drop down and so on and so on which was kind of boring it's easier to do it like that so yeah it's it's a little more feature packed than uh, the 4050 tribute which does make sense given it's uh, it's two years older and it's already after the wipe, so it's based off Windows Server 2003. There's a lot more in it. And uh, file size wise, let me show you guys one thing. Where's the disk documents? I want to go back to root. Let me go back to root. Ah, there you go. So, as you can see, the system itself is taking 8 gigs. So, that became a standard with 7 as well and 8 and 10 and Windows Server 2012, Windows Server 2016, the 8, 9 average became a sort of standard so it was very feature packed for the time for a beta you know but yeah as you can see it's a lot more start it's starting to look a lot more like Vista itself and performance wise I would say it's a little better than 4053 as far as RAM usage goes as far as as sluggish goes and overall system responsiveness it's a little more responsive but still you know not quite the ideal hence why uh, you know uh, Windows Vista failed so badly back then because they forgot about this little issue regarding people and their hardware they thought oh yeah they all got them three four gigs of RAM to run the system which wasn't a fact you know they should have actually used their brains you think that hey it's not a standard yet it's like oh let's make Windows 11 4k only so only people with 4k displays will be able to use the system or like oh let's make it uh, 32 gigs the bare minimum to run the system let's add some features some quantum computing features it's just a joke of course not not serious at all it's just an example but they forgot you know it's like they wanted to make like Windows 11 with you know 4k minimum for resolution and 4k is not a standard yet as far as uh, monitors go I would say 1080p is the actual standard and like 32 gigs of RAM minimum for the system no one would be able to run that because most are still using 8 or even 4 16 like me but hey definitely not a standard so 32 would be like a no-go and that that's that was Vista back then they were asking for like 3 gigs and people were still at 512, 1 gig and they were they were there asking for 4, 3, you know wasn't a standard it's like coming up with a system now and saying hey we need 32 to run you got only 16 so go fuck yourself 
That was what uh, Vista did back then. So it was very unstable, very heavy, very demanding. And that's why it kind of sucked. It wasn't like the OS was bad. It was not bad. It was very feature packed. I loved Vista. Like it was, it looked so fucking professional. Like the first time I saw it, I was like, holy shit, what a cool system. I gotta have it. And then when I finally got my hands on it, like two years later, I was like, holy shit. So that was what I was dreaming of. Vista. That was the system I was dreaming so much about. And it was such, such a letdown. I mean, I liked it. I used it for four years. But I was expecting more as far as performance goes. But as I was just a kid, I was 10, I think. I was like, oh, it's probably a computer's fault. It's not the system system's fault. Because I didn't know about resource usage and shit like that. I didn't know they, they could actually make it lightweight or heavier. That it would depend on them and on hardware only. But I blamed it on my computer. And I used it for four years. I even skipped uh, Windows 7 Gen because I couldn't... Uh, buy uh, a license for Windows 7 or I could build a new rig so I had to jump from Windows Vista to 8 in 2013 I think and then I made the jump from 8 to actually it was kind of weird because I went from 8 to 7 again and then from 7 to Windows 10 a sad story but I used uh, Windows 7 for like 45 minutes because like when I got my new computer, it was running on 7. I had to make the upgrade. So it was like 30 minutes on Windows 7. A sad story. I skipped the best OS Microsoft has ever made. It's sad. Yeah, I know. But like Windows 10 is pretty cool. I like Windows 10. It's very stable. It almost never dies on me. I had just one blue screen, which was totally my fault. So I don't blame the system at all. It's pretty stable. I mean, I run it 24-7. I've been running it 24-7 for years now. And it's been pretty stable. Pretty, pretty damn stable. You know, f uptime at 99%. <laughs> really? 99% uptime. So yeah. I think that's it, guys. I mean, I showed everything that would concern uh the, oh the gaming interface was changed again that's something i forgot to show you guys and as you can see the refresh button and the layout reminds a lot of this already so that was carried it over and they got rid of the connect to friends shitty uh shit that uh used to be a thing on 4053 it's not present here anymore it's not green anymore it's way more simple uh underwhelming it's not as overwhelming as it was before, which is actually good because, you know, people in general don't like overwhelmingness. So that's a pretty good change. And as you can see, if we go to the game, uh, the only thing that actually changed is the sidebar. But yeah, I kind of want to get a build with Daryl working so that we can see what the transparency really does to the hardware. Because I heard it's pretty damn heavy and unstable. So I want to see that by myself. I want to check that out. Because, amazingly enough, I never tried Longhorn before. I was too lazy. Yeah. I knew how to install it and shit, but I was like, holy shit, changing BIOS date and, the you know, installs that take hours and hours. Because that's a problem with Longhorn. It kind of takes a lot of time to install. It's not like installing XP or Vista or 7, you know. It's a very, very long process. Kind of boring, you know. But I kind of want to do it though for the sake of science and and checking things out like what changed and what did not change. It's actually cool, you know. That's that's one of the reasons why people actually get to download old stuff to run them again and see what was you know the old uh, testing builds. Because there is no point on using it like your as your main OS because it's very unstable. It's dangerous. And it's time bombed, so you had to run it with your date on uh, your BIOS date changed. That will lead to a lot of problems, network problems, so to say. So yeah, it's not usable, but it's cool, you know, for just to see what's going on, how it looks like, how it's shaped up, you know, just to follow the development line of thought, pretty much, so that you can see, you know, a few features that actually almost became a thing and did not become a thing like uh, Simon E, uh, the multi-desktop which only got back to becoming a thing back in Windows 10 
I mean, not back in Windows 10, in Windows 10, sorry about because <laughs> we're, we're in the past, we are in 2005 right now, so it wouldn't be back, it wouldn't, you know, in Windows 10, but still, that's it, guys, I hope you guys liked it, that's build uh, 5112, it's pretty easy to install as long as you get the BIOS date set, so if you want to get ISO and the tips, just comment down below. I'll try to help you guys. And that's it. Goodbye and take care.